The first step in this project will be to build a basic user interface, which with this app is gonna be a navigation view so we can show the title of our program, Insta Filter at the top. Then a large gray box saying, tap to select a picture, over which we'll place the photo they import from their photo library. Then we'll have an intensity slider across the bottom that will affect how strongly we apply our core image filters, range of value between zero and one, then a big save button to write out the finished photo to the photo library. Now initially the user won't have a picture selected, so that will be done with an at state property that's optional as an image. So we'll start off with some new properties inside here. We'll say there is at state private var image is an optional image. And at state private var filter intensity intensity is a uh, 0.5 by default, so it'll be a double. And now in our body, we're gonna say there is a navigation view. And so there will be our uh, V stack of content. Then we'll have a Z stack at the top with a rectangle filled with the secondary color. So a gray rectangle by default. Then over above that, the rectangle, we're gonna place our text uh, tap to select a picture in a foreground color of white so it always stands out nicely. Then in a font of headline so it's a bit clearer against the background, like that. Then we'll draw a picture if it exists. So that'll be image optional dot resizable and scale to fit if it exists. We'll then add an, uh, an on tap gesture to our Z stack uh, here on tap gesture, and this will just do some comment for now, select an image. Now, after the Z stack, but still inside the V stack, this is where we'll have our little controls to change the filter to other kinds of core image filter, but also to save the picture, and also our uh, slider for intensity. So we'll say first the slider, H stack, uh, text intensity, with a slider value bound to dollar, filter intensity, and I'll add a little touch of padding here, vertically, like that, so it stays away from the thing above and below it. Then below the H stack there, we'll say there's another H stack. Let's look at our buttons, so we'll say there's a button here called change filter. Uh, for now it's just a comment really, uh, which will change filter. Then add a spacer to push all to one side. On the other side is our save button. And again, it'll be a comment, just save the picture. Now, uh, attached to the outermost thing, not the navigation stack, the, the view, the, the V stack just inside it, so that's this thing here, we're gonna add a little bit of padding, keep it away from the edges and away from the bottom. So we'll say this has some padding, padding with an N, uh, and we want dot horizontal and dot bottom. Finally, a navigation title of InstaFilter. So it appears at the top. Okay, that's our basic layout. That's the entire thing. See how fast and easy it is to make in SwiftUI. It's really, really nice. Here though, I, I just love being able to place optional views like this right inside a SwiftUI layout. I think it works particularly well with the Z stack because the text below our picture, this tap select the picture, will automatically be obscured by whatever picture they bring in. Um, it doesn't overlay it in the Z stack. Now that's our code for our layout. That was fairly easy here. So we have a bit of spare time. As a result, I just briefly want to start exploring what it looks like to clean up our body property a little bit. This thing here. Um, because we have lots of layout in here, right? You know, now view, V stack, Z stack, da da da, on top gesture, da da da. Lots of things happening here, which is great. Layouts go in Swift UI views, they're good at that. But you can see we also have action code for the on tap gesture and for our two buttons being triggered here and here. Now for very small pieces of code, like, you know, you wanna to, uh, toggle a Boolean to bring up the, the picker view, for example, fine. I can see that being right inside your know, 50Y body. One, two, maybe even three lines of code, fine. I can see that being there if you have to have it there. Um, but a lot of the time, I prefer not to have these inline closures, and particularly here, our save 
closure. It's going to end up with quite a few lines of code in there to uh, make sure it's all configured correctly. And so I would suggest spinning it out into its own function or method. And right now it doesn't do anything. It's, it's straightforward. Just add a new empty method after the body called save. And you can then go ahead and call that straight from the action of the button up here. Um, you just say uh, action is save. And it just gets that code out of the body. So your body's now more focused on doing layout and structure as opposed to doing actions. The actual end result will be the same. It's just easier to read and write. Now, when you're learning, which of course you are doing right now, you're following the tutorial course, it is very common to write button actions and on tap dashes and so forth right inside the inline closures. But once you graduate this onto real projects, you know, it's it's a good idea to spend that extra time thinking about how to keep your code cleaned up. It makes your life easier in the long term. Trust me, it's much, much better. And going forwards from now on, I'll be adding more of these little cleanup tips here and there. So as you start to approach the end of the course, you'll feel increasingly confident that your code is in good shape.